The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. All right, folks, how are you doing today? Welcome here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I'm your host today, Daryl Martin. And if you have any questions about futures, Forex, Nadex, options, stock, ETFs, on down the list, uh, go ahead and give me a call. And, of course, I love to answer questions on Nadex and uh, anything else you got. So you can give me a call right here at 877-927-6648. And right now we're going to go ahead and do a quick uh, market wrap for you and look at where everything is standing right now, seeing quite a bit of movement, but also starting to see some pullbacks off the deviations. We got the S&P up 14 points. We got the NASDAQ up 20. The Dow's up 152, and copper is up 1% on the day. Silver up 3% on the day, so moving huge there. And uh, we'll go ahead and pull up one more for you that you'll probably want on this list, I'm sure, which is a big mover on the day. We got gold, and it is moving like crazy. It is up 34 points on the day right now. That's 2%. So silver leading the pack with a huge 3% move. Looking on over at our ags, we got corn is up $3. We got soybeans up $13, almost at a percent move there. Oil moving like crazy, up $2 right now on the day. So the markets are moving. Those who expected a quiet day are not seeing it. We got it yesterday, but not today. Looking on over at oil, like I said, uh, up quite a bit, almost 3%. Natural gas actually uh, sort of quiet right now from yesterday's close. We got euro dollar up 23 pips, pound dollar up 11, Aussie dollar up 69, and a U.S. Yen up 8, U.S. Franc down 5, U.S. Canadian down 28. Not a whole lot of moves on the currency at the moment because all the money flowing right now is going into things like, obviously, silver, gold, oil, and the market. So that's where the money is just, it is moving there right now. And, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Be ready for it because... You know, after the markets close and reopen and the election results, uh, you know, come out piece by piece or, you know, who knows if they come out at once. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't know till Friday who won everything or what, but we'll see. Um, anyway, so the markets are rallying up at the moment. And uh, we got to make sure that we are looking at things like deviation levels when we're looking at this. And I'll go over those here in just a moment. But first thing like I like to do every day is go over and do a wrap up on the fundamentals. And as a trader... Talked about this a little bit yesterday, um, but you want to be looking at technical, fundamental, seasonal, and statistical. And most traders are pretty good at hopping in on the technical. Um, that's right there. I mean, you know, you can find technical analysis everywhere, right? But you also got to have your seasonal analysis, your fundamental analysis, and you also want to have your statistical analysis. And why? Well, because you need to know how all these things affect the market when you're making your trading decisions. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the chart, Okay. So, yes, I'm all about trading off the chart. But at the same time, I want to know what is the expected move on a market. So that way, even if my chart says buy, uh, I might not take another new entry. Okay? So uh, let me give you an example on that, and then we'll hop over and focus in on fundamentals. Because I have a pretty good example right here with the S&P at the moment. So right here, here's the S&P. And I had a buy signal this morning. Came in. And we're gonna buy right there. So right as the market was about to open here, I got a buy, and it was at let's see, fourteen. Let's see, would have been fourteen uh, fifteen for a buy. Okay, great. All right, we take the buy signal. Excellent. We got another add on to the position signal right here. So that's good. Well, now there is a. I have another potential buy. The way that I trade. Okay, where I break out on the previous bars. You know, in an uptrend when it breaks the previous bar's high after making a lower high. Well, in this case, um, I have a little bit of an issue. I don't think I'm going to take this trade. Okay, Now, I may still tighten my stops, and you know I have, but I wouldn't want to take another entry at the moment, and here's the reason. And this is something my charts won't necessarily tell me, Okay, and that's the deviation levels. Well, what are the deviation levels? So if I pull up the diagnostic deviation levels, you can get these over on our site. They're part of 
the old diagnostic box spread analyzer that we have that you can get access to. And uh, you get two weeks. You can try these things out. Not only the analyzer for, say, if you're trading Nadex, but if you're trading futures or forks, you're going to want access to this. Okay? This is not your standard deviation. This is implied deviation. Well, what's standard deviation? First of all, what's deviation, period? Okay? And then what's standard and what's implied? All right? Well, deviation is basically the expansion of the market. How far should it go in either direction on any given day based upon how far it's moved in the past is standard deviation, okay? So the market's been swinging up and down a whole lot based on these many days, like an, you call it average true range, um, Bollinger Bands, um, standard deviation models, uh, pivot points. So things like this are historical. So based on past movement, what is the expectation of future movement? Well, that's good, except for, you know, the whole past performance not indicative of a future performance thing, you know? Um, past movement has nothing to do with future movement, right? The elections have something to do with future movement. So, or, you know, news announcements, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, on down the list. So, how do we have any idea what future movement should be? Well, you want to use a different kind of deviation formula. Instead of a standard historical deviation or like an ATR or um, average true range or Bollinger Band or whatever looking historically, you want to look forward at implied deviation. Well, okay, so what's this implied thing? Well, implied comes from implied volatility. All right? Well, implied means basically, you know, it, it's implied. It's the, This is how far it's going to move. Okay? Based on what? Based on vol Volatility, volatility, movement, so implied future expectation, so expectation, implied expectation of movement. Well, where does implied volatility come from? It comes from options, like calls and puts, okay? So you got to go in, and there's not really such thing as an implied volatility. It's just a mathematical number that comes out of an options price, and you have to know how to do all the math and all that stuff. It's, you know, it's not a whole lot of fun, but, you know, it can be done. And you pull the implied volatility out of four options for the current month and four options for the next trading month and four options for the next trading month if it's active and possibly four options for the following trading month if it's active. So that way you get a, what you call a volatility index, sort of like a VIX, okay? You put all those together, you average them, <clears throat> that becomes your index for implied volatility, then use that number and factor it into a expansion or a deviation formula. The net result is what you see right here, <laughs> okay? So we do all the work. But um, so like 16 points was the expected movement 16.25 is the expected movement on the S&P today. From what? Well, actually from yesterday's settlement price. Okay? Not necessarily the close, but the settlement price. And um, we're actually using these now on the deviation formulas as well, the settlement prices versus the close prices. Well, why do you use the settlement versus the close when you're going to, say, add 16 points for your one expected move or subtract 16 points from your one down expected move? Well, the reason that we're using the settlement is because settlement is based upon the exchange's posted settlement. So if we go in, and I'll explain exactly what this is here. If we go over to, say, cmegroup.com, and we hop on their site, and we go over and we look at, let's see here, equity indexes. And then we scroll on down, and we find the S&P. And then we click on this little button right here, settlements. Then what you'll see is it'll pop up, it'll load the settlements, and here's the settlement price of yesterday. Notice that's 1412. Well, that's different than, you know, the last on here says 1411.25. And if I go in and I pull up a chart, here, I'll pull up a chart on a TOS since I'm using a unique bar type. It'll work a little easier. Well, the closing price on here says 1411.75. This one says 1411.25. Well, that's bid, so that could be ask, right? So you got a different price right there. And then you have a different price on settlement. So literally, you got your last on CME, your last on your chart, and your settlement on CME all being different prices. Well, that's why we use settlement, okay? Because it's a consistent number across everything. Um, we also use that's what floor traders use. That's what institutional traders will use when uh, calculating, you know, things like pivot levels, things like that. Um, it's also what the exchange uses to determine mark to market on profit and loss. It's what the exchange uses to determine um, option whenever an option is exercised if it's in the money. So it's really the standard number to use. Well, what is this settlement number? And uh, what I'll do is I'll show you an example here. Right down here. This is inside our site. And I'll zoom in on it. Okay. 
So what they do, the CME, like, and this is just an example. So if you want to go get the whole formula, you can get it off their site and, you know, have fun with that and how all that works. But just to give you, you don't need to know how they do it all. Just you need to understand the basic concepts, you know, where the number comes from. All right. So let's say in the last 30 seconds of trading on the S&P, on, you know, whatever day here, uh, these were, you know, the prices that were traded. And this is the volume traded at each price in the last 30 seconds. And I understand this may be really low, but I'm just giving you an example. Um, what you do is take the price multiplied by the volume, and that's volume weighted. Okay, so volume weighted. And then you go there and you sum it together. So the sum of the weighted value. Then you take the total volume from the last 30 seconds, and then you get the average. All right, so hence volume weighted VWAP, volume weighted average price, 1400.25 being like a settlement price. So that's where they come from. And that way you can't have some like erroneous, like look at this, like 1404 over here. Like one order came in at 1404, 200 got filled. Well, what, what is that all about, right? So well, what if that was the last trade? And really the, you know, most of the trades are right around 1400. So that can really throw off charts. It can throw off all sorts of things. So by using volume weighted, you get a consistent, accurate number. And again, this is what's used on most, uh, basically by most of the, the big boys for the trading. So we factored in from that. And then uh, to get on back on task here, if we're looking on over at the deviation levels, then what we can see is that that deviation for one deviation for today was 1428.25. Well, if we go over here, we go, okay, well, so that means 1428.25. Right there. And uh, there we go. That's how far I should expect the market to move. I, if it's going to go up. Now, this is not telling you direction. It's telling you expectation of expansion. Okay, so how far should the market go from yesterday's settlement price? So that being the expectation, I'm really probably not looking to take on additional long trades going like right into that price or past that price. Okay. Um, now, if I'm in a trade, does that mean I have to get out immediately? No, it doesn't. All right. But it may mean I want to tighten my stops, depending upon, you know, what type of bars you're using, how you're trading. There's a lot of different ways to tighten stops. You may just decide, especially if you caught a good chunk of it, you know, like in this instance where, you know, you got in right here from 1414, you got to ride it up to 1428. You may decide, you know what, 14 points is not a bad day on the S&P. I think I'll just take my money and go home. <laughs> so not necessarily a horrible plan. But like this trade right here, I wouldn't want to take this entry because I don't, one, I only expect it to move a couple more points up. It's already made that movement for the day. So I expect it probably to turn around now and pull back probably to somewhere around 1420, you know, 1425. So uh, where do I get that number? Well, I mean, you can sort of see right here is where it sort of hesitated. But you also can tell when looking at the deviation levels, 0. 0.5 is 1420.25. So it can easily pull back. Say half a deviation. Heck, it may give it all back up before the end of the day. We're waiting on the elections after all. But uh, that's why deviations are so important. That's where to tighten your stops. Okay? So anyways, and look at that. I sort of line up. But uh, more importantly, it's all about profit management whenever you're looking at them in this method, this way. Stay with there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, just going through and looking at a few more things, we're going to go ahead and wrap up and uh, look at our fundamentals. So on the fundamental side of things, what do we got that is going on? Well, um, we want to look at you know what happened last night and uh, what happened this morning. And I'll go ahead and I'll just uh, pull up some quick charts here to make it uh, a little faster. And we'll go in and check out the Aussie dollar. Well, it looks like the Aussie dollar maybe moved a little bit last night. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> uh, right there, there was a move from 1.0366 to 1.0436. Wow. Okay. 100 pit move in seconds. Uh, well, not seconds. Okay, 20 minutes. But um, still, <laughs> it's a big move. And uh, we did talk about that trade last night. I'm like, hey, this is going to be the big trade for the night. Go back and listen to the archives yesterday. I said the Aussie has been having all sorts of issues, and that you know this is going to be their interest rate statement. So definitely be looking at it for a big move. And the potential play you're probably going to be one checking out, I stated, was looking at doing a straddle trade on the Aussie dollar. So we definitely had that straddle trade. There was a lot of different ways to play it. And uh, the Aussie moved up a lot. And, uh, I mean, uh, I, we'll see here. 1.0443 moved right up to about one and a half deviations. Okay, so check this out here. We got Aussie dollar 1.0419. Or, yeah, okay, there we go. 1.0419 was the one deviation. 1.0445 was the one and a half. So at 1.0419, which was, I mean, it basically hit that right there. 
became almost a support level. And uh, we can throw a price level on that to make it a little bit easier. And there we go. And then looking on up a little bit higher to 1.0445. Look at that. I mean, it's right there. Okay, almost up to 1.5, and, and it's been trading in a range between the 1 and the 1.5 and deviation. And so a uh, pretty cool trade that you could hop in on. Um, if you are a nighttime trader, so some of you, uh, you know, myself, I'm usually asleep during that time of the day. Uh, but if, uh, well, 10.30, I'm probably not asleep then, but I, was, uh, I wasn't I trading. So I was hanging out with my daughter and my wife and my newborn little baby boy. And um, But anyways, if we go over there and we check it out, let's see if we can look at some possible examples on it. So I want to see if I can pull something up for you and maybe show you how this might have played out. Okay. Um, if you're trading on Nadex. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have an account with Nadex, you need to grab an account with Nadex, okay? Um, you can get it free, all right? If you want to trade Forex, you want to trade Futures, or you do trade Forex or Futures. So if you have any interest whatsoever, or if you are already doing so, and I mean future indexes, so if you're doing ETFs, like the Spiders, the Diamonds, the Qs, you know, et cetera, if you're, doing, if you're trading the S&P, the NASDAQ, if you're, if you're trading the oils, or oil, natural gas, um, gold, silver, copper, uh, corn, soybeans, okay, forex pairs, Nadex, all right? So any of those areas, then you are interested in Nadex. If you're interested in having defined risk trading with massive leverage, Nadex, okay? Um, hop on over to tfnn.com, click on Nadex, and you can click on create account, and you can have an account live funded with everything in it, no you know, platform fees, no data fees, nothing. Get in. Uh, no broker fees. So, no commissions. Just, uh, they have basic exchange fees, like, you know, CME has exchange fees, but then you got to pay your broker fees and your data fees and your platform fees and, you know, all that stuff. But with Nadex, you don't have to worry about all that, okay? Uh, you just have the basic exchange fee. And, uh, and that's on a per transaction basis, and they even cap it. So, if you're doing 100 contracts, you're paying the same as if you're only doing 10. Uh, but quick start, start to funded, boom, done. And uh, you're, you know, what are in a little as five minutes. You can also go up to a, our product, click on the, uh, let's see here, demo account, and you can sign up for a demo account. You can have it in about 15 seconds. So whatever, before we get to commercial break, you can have a demo account. Just phone your username, first name, last name, phone number, and email address. And uh, they'll send you an email, and you'll be able to uh, log right in and check it out. And um, we have tons of education built in. Hop onto our two-week uh, free trial. And uh, we have videos teaching you how to do things. We have a scanner with the deviation levels, all sorts of stuff. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and hop over and check out this trade right here on, you know, how could it have been played. And um, let's see here. So let's look at it. And I'll try to shrink this down so it doesn't mess up with the whole screen share thing for those of you on Tiger TV and over in the Tiger's Den. And uh, let's go check it out. Okay. And we'll pull this down and move this over. And we're going to come back, and I'm going to analyze this. You can also do it on a spreads, but right now those spreads are those spreads are closed down. New spreads are opened up. So to pull the spreads, the, the binders from last night, we need to look at these. And I'll show you an example of how to do this trade. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And I'm your host, Daryl Martin. What we're checking out right now is looking at a Nadex um, straddle on the euro dollar okay and uh so i want to check that out real quick and pull it on up and uh hold on one second there we go um so we got forex binaries is what we're looking at and we're looking at aussie dollar and we're looking at it based upon a couple things okay so uh you know you could look at all sorts of fundamentals but at the end of the day what we're looking at there is a interest rate statement about to come out um in australia at 10 30 here and uh, you know, 10:30, I guess what was that Eastern time? And let's see. Uh, and one more thing here. Let's see. I'm gonna pull it all up for you. It came out exactly at because I want to make sure we got everything right. So when you go through this trade, you fully, fully understand it. Okay. So 10:30 Eastern time, the trade came out. So the trade came out at 10.30 that you know the news announcement's coming out. And you want to have a couple things. How far do you expect it to move? Okay. Well, this is a high-impact announcement. It's an interest rate statement by a country. Okay. It's going to have a big impact on that currency. So Aussie dollar would be, of course, the currency to trade. How far do you expect it to move? Well, um, let's go ahead and we'll go back here a little bit. And we'll pull this down. And... Um, what we're going to do right now is let's delete that one and delete that one. Just pull them off. 
Okay, and we talked about okay on Aussie dollar here. We had an expectation that uh, the one move up would be up to 1.0419, okay? And then the one move down, the expectation is moved down to 1.0313. So we can put that right here. All right, so that's our expected move. Maybe zoom this out a little bit and see if it's out there. Uh, a little bit hard to see in the flew up to you know that price level right over here. Pull that down and you can see here's where it moved up to our expected move of 1.04. Again, 1.9 was the expectation. Now it could move further. Obviously it, uh... oh there, it's where it is. I was, I was like, what is going on? Okay, there we go. <laughs> so last night. Um, I wanted to show you that piece. Okay, so right here, and it did obviously move up to one of those deviation levels. So now if we go to Nadex, and once you got your Nadex account set up, and um, you go over to Aussie Dollar, you click on Daily, and then under Daily, you're going to want to find strikes that are near that. So we're going to pull up the 1.0420, right, because that's right near 1.0419. Remember, that was one of our strikes there. So we'll go ahead and pull that one up. Let me move this over. I'm just going to get this out of the way because we don't even need it right now. We'll put this right over here. We'll drag it down. They really let you arrange the platform however you want to. It's really nice. But um, And we'll shrink this piece right here. So, um, you know, I'm trying to share on one screen. I have ten screens, so <laughs> got to make it all fit. Um, and I want to make it where you can see it so that way it makes complete sense to you as we're walking through the tray because this can be a little bit complicated. Uh, the first time you do it. After that, it becomes actually a very, very surprisingly easy trade to do. All right. So now that we know, okay, we got a price level up here at 1.0419. Then we go over here and we can click back and we can check out. All right. I don't want to see that. I want to see, there we go, this one, Aussie dollar. And I want to look at 1.0420. So we're going to pull up. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you looking right here at the actual chart on this spread itself. Okay. And uh, we're going to expand on back here. There we go. And looking, you know, at this trade as one of the possible trades that you can get in on. And as, it's a binary, basically. It's 1.04, and we got uh, 2 0 up here. And you would go in and you'd buy this binary. Okay, so you'd set to go in and buy it. And let's say you could get into the trade for, you know, $20 or, you know, whatever. You click on that trade. You'd buy that binary. And then you would sell the other binary. So what would be the binary that you're going to sell? Well, you'd sell on the Aussie dollar, you'd sell the 1.0313 strike. So how close do you can get to that? 1.0320, 1.0300. So either one of those uh, would probably work for you. So basically you're straddling it at the end of the day. I mean, you're, you have the expectation of movement on the Aussie dollar is about 50 pips. So you're going to 50 pips above and 50 pips below the market and where it's at at that time. And so at the time of the trade there, we were expecting basically a 50 pip up move or 50 pip down move. And so you could have sold this binary. And obviously that trade wouldn't work out that well for you because the market just went, you know, straight up. But um, if you did sell it, let's see here, you could have sold it for about two bucks last night. <laughs> so it wouldn't have cost you much, or uh, ten bucks, about ten, ten twelve dollars. So it cost about ten or twelve dollars to sell it last night and uh, to get in on that trade before the news announcement. Okay? So you have about ten to twelve dollars, we'll say twelve dollars on the high side, that you put up in risk to go short. And then on this side up here, about 50 points above, 1.0420. See if we can get all the data on that. Looks like we've been risking. Let's see here. It's not giving me past. See, so sometimes it only give you the midnight. All right, it would have been about 20 bucks. Probably about 15, 10. Oh, we'll just say 12 dollars because they're both equally 50 pips away. And so being 50 pips away, let's see, is that right? 50, 60, so 420, yep. All right, so you'd be looking at about $12 on each side. So you'd buy, what you do is you click here, 1.0420. So you'd actually click the buy, and this one would actually be priced at about $20, or about $12, like I said. And then, so you'd have one, and let's just say you were, you know, buying it at 12. I'm not going to put the order in. This is a live account. Um, 
And uh, obviously, this is not the Aussie dollar trade at the moment, but this would be the Aussie dollar trade last night. And then on 1.0320, you'd click the sell ticket there. And you could have, say, you know, one. So it'd be a one to one, however you want to do that. And uh, actually, I guess this would actually be selling for 88. And um, or uh, you'd buy for 12 and you'd sell for 88. There we go. And that way, if it goes down, you can make money. If it goes up, you can make money. And uh, basically, it's a $12 risk on both sides of the trade. So it's a pretty cool way that the entire trade works. And um, there's a lot of profit potential built into the trade. And if the trade gets to where, you know, you want it to be, <laughs> then you make some pretty good money. Um, how much would you actually make on the trade? Well, right now, you would have been able to, the one that you bought for 12 the one that you sold for 12 you would have lost the 12 bucks. So you'd lost $12, okay? So check, $12 gone. This one you bought for $12. Well, what is it worth right now? Well, right now, it's actually worth $97. So on that trade, if you would have, and that's if you're still holding it, I would have got out, but let's just say you were still holding it. Okay, and I mean, if you're still holding it, that's the better scenario. So I'm not trying to say I would have got out because that's you know because I would have made more money. I'm saying I would have got out just because that's I would I usually get out after the the news announcement impacts over. But uh, if you would have been still holding it, um, ninety seven dollars, you know, and then minus twelve, right? Because you lost twelve on the short side, you made eighty five bucks. What was your total investment on the trade? Well, basically, you know, not including, <coughs> pardon me, fees, um, would have been twenty four dollars. Okay, and so if we go in and go, okay, well, what was my, uh, I guess, ROI on that trade? And basically, you got a 350% return on one trade, and uh, you did that in, a, you know, basically 10 to 20 minutes, okay? If you, now, you did it in hours if you held it. What would happen if you would have got out? And this is probably one of the more important things. This is more how I like to trade, okay? I would never wait, Okay. I would not wait until expiration. Once it hits that expected move, like that 420 level there, I'm getting out. Well, how do I know what, what my exit price will be? Uh, well, it's pretty simple. If you buy a 420, okay, and it's at 420, then the binary is going to be worth about 50 bucks, okay? So let's just say you put in an order to exit at 50. Why is it going to be at $50? Well, like right now, the market's at 1.0438. And look at what the price of this thing's trading at. 1.0440 is trading at right at $50. Wow. So uh, why is that happening? Well, the reason that's happening right now is because since it's at the same price as the strike, since the Aussie dollar is trading at the same price as the Aussie dollar binary, there's a 50-50 chance it'll still be there at expiration. When's expiration? Well, expiration here is like in an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. So there's a 50-50 chance it'll still be there. It doesn't matter if it's five, if it's you know, I don't know. If it doesn't matter if it's 9 p.m. at night, or 2 a.m. in the morning, or 2 o'clock right now, there's still a 50-50 chance the price will be there at that. So what does that mean to you? Well, that means that you know if it hits that strike, you can get out right at 50 bucks. Now you may you may want to take out your bid ask spread, which is about four dollars. So you may want to get out like at 48. Okay. Um, so if I bought, then I'd sell at 48 if it's trading right on par. See, 1.0439, 1.0440. So I may sell at $48. So if my total risk on the trade was 24, and as soon as it hit that price, I got out at 48, I made a 100% return on my investment, okay? I had a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio as an expectation of movement based on a news announcement, and it only took me... 10 to 20 minutes to do the entire trade as far as, you know, basically when it was over. So you may say 30 minutes total. Now, when do you get in on the trade? Well, you know when the news announcement's coming out. That's not a guess, okay? So it's announced. That there, I mean, there's absolutely no... You can't, you can't mess that up, okay? Um, in the sense of it's coming out at 1030. There's a couple things that you do want to be aware of when you're looking at news is a lot of news announcements will actually be released like to Reuters subscribers, things like, like this right here, two minutes before they come out. You know, there are different announcements, like a couple minutes before they come out. And so you don't want to wait 10 or 15 seconds until the announcement comes out before you get in. Don't get in like right before it, okay? At least get in, I'd say at least five minutes before. And in reality, practically, you need to get in 10 to 15 minutes before if you're doing a news trade like on binaries or spreads. Why? 
Well, uh, one is there can be a lot of this weird little volatility. Sometimes the market will start to move, and you may miss out on really a good entry. Because like a minute or two before, if news le- maybe even that it's not supposed to be out, but sometimes news leaks out, okay, you can miss out on the trade. Um, other reasons. One is market makers don't have to always fill trades when, like, right when news is released. Okay, it's called a fast market. All right, because a market maker's job is to make a market. It's not really to trade directionally. So when you're buying and they're selling, a true market maker is not selling. They're actually selling and then they're loading it off to somebody else. Okay, so they're trying to get basically they're trying to get rid of the risk. They just want to make the bid ask spread. Okay, they're not trying to take an up opposing trade. Now I'm not talking about bucket shops. I'm talking about market makers on exchanges. Okay, they're they're literally trying to unload their risk on a consistent basis. So, and sometimes they are directional. They end up being directional a lot of the time. But their big goal, of course, is to just make the bid ask spread. That's that's where their you know the bread and butter comes from on a consistent basis. And so, like right at news, fast move. Sometimes you may not get filled, or the bid ask spread often on any product will get wider right before news, okay? Because the market maker is trying to give themselves fractions of a second more time to have a chance to unload, you know, the product whenever it come, whenever that news announcement comes out and, you know, they're filling the orders back and forth. So you need to get in at least 10, if not 15 minutes before the news announcement on a trade. You can see that really had little to no impact on your trade, all right, if you got in here like 15 minutes before. Um, and, you know, as far as it wouldn't hurt you, you're not giving up, really much of anything, except for what you're doing is you're getting in before the bid spread just goes berserk. Um, you don't have to worry about the, the fast market. You don't have to worry about early news release. You don't have to worry about the two-minute on Reuters, whatever. Um, so that's just a, you know an important, important, important tip. And you can see your movement, a majority of that happened right there. And, you know, I might have been tempted to even hop out of the trade when it, when it went up here and it stopped and it pulled back, okay? So I may not have held it, you know, whatever, for the full 15 minutes. Now, what I will tell you is, on news trades, usually you should not expect the impact of the news. Now, I'm not talking about all day and all that, but the impact of the news, about 15 minutes past when the news comes out should be pretty much whatever the news was going to do to the market, it has done. Now, the market will take over, okay? So, what I'm, what I'm talking about is all your news traders, your algos, your institutions, everything else. Bam! They're throwing it in right then. At the, they're not waiting, okay? They're not going to be the last to get in, all right? About 15 minutes after that, then it's just going to be market movement, expectation, digestion of it. Was it really that big of a deal? You know, all that. And so you really shouldn't expect anything past 15 minutes. Um, you know, and so you definitely want to be tightening your stops or taking off your profits at that point. And you can see, you know, as an example on this trade, it just, you know, happens to work out this way. But uh, at this trade, we actually did hit the high at 15 minutes, and then the market just went flat. So 15 minutes before... And you probably want to be out 15 minutes after if you haven't hit your price level, okay? You may not have got all the profit you were looking for. You may have taken a small loss, you know. But it's one of those things, if I do a straddle, and here's something that's funny, too. You know, if I do a straddle on a news trade, and let's just say it does this. It just goes boop, and then it goes flat. And 15 minutes has passed. There's still value in my binary, okay? I put 24 bucks in. You know, I'm probably going to get back maybe 10 bucks on it <laughs> to get out. But uh, I can just decide to get out of the trade and keep the other 12. That's better than losing 100% of what I put into it. And now I can just put 10 more in for the next straddle trade. But 15 minutes after is probably when you're looking for your exit. Stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus
prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks. And uh, let's see here. We got a call which like coming in right now. Let me see what we got going on. We got Stephen uh, from Princeton. How's it going, Stephen? Okay. I had a question about the Aussie trade you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, you talked about, uh, uh, I guess it was uh, buying the uh, uh, 420 uh, binary. Was that correct? Correct. Okay. Before uh, the announcement, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back at like 10, 10 o'clock uh, last night. Yeah. Now, what I don't understand is I look, I'm look. i looking at that chart, you know, the, uh, the historical chart. Are you in chart. demo? <laughs> no, I'm in the live. Okay, you're in the live. All right, go ahead. Okay. Now, uh, but... My chart doesn't go back to last night. It only it only goes back. Yeah, some, some yeah. Sometimes they don't show all the way back. So I just submitted a ticket to them. Um, like it's probably showing you from midnight forward. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So the data's not on there. So I. Well, what do you um, do? How, how how are you getting the prices? You're judging the price was back then. Uh, because they're basically equidistant from each other on both sides. So therefore, on the sell side, if it's twelve bucks, and the buy side, it'll be about twelve bucks. Oh. Because the, the sell side, side was actually showing it. doesn't go back that far either, does it? Yeah, it actually is showing that far back. So, 
Oh. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, go sometimes ahead. it shows far. Yeah, I, I, I can't answer far. that. I can't answer that question. <laughs> um, oh. So I, okay. I don't know the answer. Because I, 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 I submitted a ticket to him on that one. So, but um, yeah, that's. I mean, usually I'm just trading, you know, so it doesn't really matter to me. But when I'm trying to show an example, it is helpful if you can actually see all the data. Okay. Well, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I just I couldn't quite figure that out because I guess so you're saying so the 380 shows it back earlier yeah exactly if you go to 380 and so basically them being equidistant also part of it is I, I, I just know how binary prices are priced well no i understand the concept so, about them being equidistant it's just, right yeah exactly but yeah. you're saying there's some kind of weird asymmetry about the charting um yeah well it's just on a different product so for whatever reason that it doesn't have that on that exact strike for whatever reason they don't have it but so you see the same number of five minute Tick increments, right? If it's a five minute, you're looking at or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It had the exact same. It has nothing to do with the product at all. It's just the chart for whatever reason isn't displaying the data. Oh, okay, because I was just confused about that. Okay. Yeah, so trust me. I pulled it up. I was like, uh, okay. So yeah, because I, I mean, you can see where it's fifty because once it hit that price, you yeah. know, at night it got up to fifty. So like, okay, well, what happened before fifty? So yeah, yeah if you go it over and you look weird. at the um, the three twenty, see, I'll show you this here over on the. Uh... Now, if you would have had it open, it would have showed it to you. But, oh, um, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it I, actually is recording it. But, yeah, I mean, so it, I guess showing you a ton. Or we'll, we'll see here. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah, I was getting chart, all the data from last night before. So, uh, but, yeah, what you do, I'll actually show you. This is actually a really good tip, okay? Yeah. yeah when you yeah. have the chart open, if you see something like that, yeah. then click on this little email button right here and say chart. Because, I mean, basically, when you turn stuff in like this, they fix it. They're really good at it. Well, you Chart's know not showing from opening time, only showing from midnight on this binary strike. Odd USD daily greater than 1.0420. Yeah. Please fix noticed, on all. Have you ever, <laughs> no, have you ever noticed on the uh, US index charts that they stop, uh, you know, they open at either 6 or 8 o'clock, and then they run for a while, but then they, the charting kind of freezes at like 9 o'clock. You're talking about the, the DX? No, I'm talking about the, the small cap. The small cap opens at 8, and usually it has like, you know, 15, 20 minutes of bars, and then there's it freezes until midnight, and then it picks it up again at midnight. Have you ever noticed that? What are you talking about? The small cap, you're talking about the U.S. Index. Small cap. The small so, cap. Okay, so, okay, you're talking about the S&P? Or, are you talking about the Russell 2000? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, what you're, uh, you'll actually see like a weird little, the ice has really weird hours, um, because the Russell now, it used to be, you know, over... On the market there. now it's on um, the ice. So if, you, so if you go to the ice.com, yeah. And a lot of times when it opens up, they're posting the settlement price. They post it after because they actually trade on the ice until six, um, and they but they settle after six, and so it goes back and it does some weird stuff. But if you go over to products, it really messes up. Yeah, I couldn't figure that out at all. That was just very weird. But yeah, go to the ice.com and go okay. to the products, and you'll see more information about it. Now, thanks for calling in. If you have any questions tomorrow, definitely give me a call.